Coffee and convo, y'all. Let's get it. Yo, salute to everybody already here in the building, man. Welcome to the latest installment of Coffee and Convo. I am your host, Graphic Raider, man. Salute to everybody here in the building. Once again, man, the greatest, greatest chat in YouTube history, man. Salute to Raider Ryan, man. Demented Isaac, Tyree, Jeffrey, man. I see Big One of 83, my guy in the building, man. All my people, man, wiped in feet meaning hit them thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button. If you are not subscribed yet, we are almost to 25,000 subscribers. Can't do it. Can't do it without you guys, man. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps us get to our next milestone, which is ridiculous. 25K, man. Uh, salute to uh, Big Way says, you have to shoot part of your video at CRC Graph. View is amazing, man. Salute to my guy, um, salute to consume this river college, man. For those who don't know, salute to my guy, man. Um, let me see a lot to talk about today. You guys, we're going to talk about some potential corner help in free agency. We're going to talk about an interesting Instagram video that went viral yesterday, uh, with one of the top quarterbacks in this year's draft and one of the top wide receivers in this year's draft. We're also going to talk about, um, a former Raider, that hasn't found a job yet, and if it makes any sense, if we can potentially bring him back on a cheat. Um, and then in a little while, we may have a guest come on as well. So stay tuned, you guys. Let's get some uh, comments in. This is y'all's show, more of a QA and a today. We're going to break down some things, and then we're just going to keep it moving, man. Salute to my guy Ridge back in the building. Hammer Man says, you're moving to LV? Yes. Yes. 2025. Me and my family will be out there. Uh, Indiana. I'm going to drop it right before the season, brother. Right before not going to do it anytime soon because, you know, we, we want to drop the single when it's hot. You know what I mean? When when everything is rolling, man. So when closer to the season starts, we'll be dropping a new anthem. Salute to my guy. Um, Isaac, what do you mean? Is it true? We can start here. For those of you who have not seen the video yesterday that was all across Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you find your, you know, your stuff on, TikTok, all that good stuff. Um, Jaden Daniels once again plays into the whole narrative that he may potentially end up a Raider. I don't know if you guys seen this. You know what? I'm going to share. I'm going to share this and play it. Let me see real quick. I'm going to present this real quick, you guys, so you guys can see it for yourself. And I want to ask your guys' opinion and your take on uh, what we should take from this. Okay. Because do these guys know something that we don't know? Let me know. Salute to everybody here in the building. Bro. I'm gonna tell y'all what Jim going. <laughs> Keep it interesting there. If you want to do all that, I'm gonna say where he going. <laughs> and y'all never gonna believe it. Wow. He might uh, he might be part of the old homie. Wow. <laughs> That's what you wanna do. <laughs> That's what you wanna do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my partner with his old homie. My partner with his old homie. I'll let y'all guess. <laughs> so, there's two things you can take from this, you guys, and I think we've talked about this on previous shows. The Raiders, Antonio Pierce, the connection is there, right? Uh, Devontae Adams popped in the video. You know what I mean? There's a lot of talk about the Raiders and their connection to Jaden Daniels. Um, I don't know if you guys seen it, but Colin Coward came out the other day and said that what he's hearing behind the scenes is the commanders are set in stone on their, on their pick at number two, and they're going to get 
quarterback, LSU quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels. So there's two things you can look at this. When when neighbors was saying homie, I don't think that he would address, I don't think he would address Antonio Pierce like that. I think Jaden looks at him as more of a, more of a father figure, you know, the OG, not not the not the homie. You know what I mean? I think what he was referring to was the commander saying, hey, we're going to take you at two and we're potentially going to, you know, use a draft pick or two to go get your friend, one of your best friends, Brandon Ayuk from the 49ers. I mean, you could look at this either way, you guys. You know what I'm saying? I, I just think the more realistic um, option is for the commanders to take them at two, then they potentially trade, you know, a draft pick to go get Brandon Ayuk. And, you know, you, you, you never really know, man. The commanders already have a receiver that, you know, hasn't really been unlocking his full potential because of the quarterback position. Who's to say the Niners won't say, hey, man, send over Scary Terry. We'll send over Brandon Ayuk. We'll wash our hands of this thing. And mind you, Scary Terry, man, Terry McLaurin is one of the, you know, best up and coming wide receivers in, this, in, in the NFL. You know what I mean? But it could be a selling point for Jaden Daniels because from what I heard and from I know probably a lot of you guys have heard also in the past that Adam Peters, the general manager from the 49ers, said some things, kind of had some harsh words for Jaden Daniels in the past. I've never heard it, but I've seen, you know, the rumor floating around the Internet that he said some, you know, not so good things about Jaden Daniels in the past. Maybe this is one of those things, a selling point to say, hey, we're going to take you at two. And we're potentially going to make a make a move to go get your guy, Brandon Ayuk. I don't know if there's already a trade in play, you know, in place with the 49ers. But, you know, I know they've been working around the clock trying to secure a new deal for Brandon Ayuk. But Brandon Ayuk may have, you know, already tarnished that relationship with the way he's gone about this, um, you know, extension with the 49ers. So I want to ask you guys, what do you think about this? Do you think it's more along the lines of Malik Neighbors saying, He's going to reunite with Antonio Pierce, the old homie. Or do you think this is him saying he's going to go to two at the commanders and the commanders are going to make a move for one of his best friends, Brandon Ayuk, and you have an Arizona State University uh, reunion of sorts. Um, I, I think the I think the the second one is probably um, the best way to go about this. I think that maybe the commanders make a move for Brandon Ayuk. Adam Peters, former general manager with the Niners, there's a relationship there. He can make a call. You know, he knows Brandon Ayuk and what he brings to the table. It only makes, I, I think it makes sense, you guys, that they can probably sell Jaden Daniels with, they don't have to sell him anything, to be real with you. But um, I, I think that, you know, they're going to say, they said, we're going to take you at two and we're going to make you a happy man by bringing in somebody that you already have a rapport with, uh, with which is, Brandon Ayuk. And like I said before, you guys, I do not think that he would refer to Antonio Pierce as the old homie or, you know, one of them. I think that Jaden respects him and looks at him as, as more of a father figure, a guy that came out and, and found him in San Bernardino, you know, in high school and recruited him to Arizona State before he ended up heading to LSU in the transfer portal. So that's kind of what I think about this situation. Only a few more weeks, y'all, we will finally know what the hell is truly going on with Jaden Daniels. But if I if I had to be a guessing man, I had to be a betting man, I'd probably bet that Jaden Daniels is going to the commanders at two. We've seen some crazy things happen. I, I wouldn't put a J.J. McCarthy move past Adam Peters. I wouldn't put a Drake May move past Adam Peters in the, in, in the GM over there uh, with the commanders. Who's to say? And if Jaden Daniels falls to three, I do think there's a very realistic chance that we can get him with New England. Or maybe New England takes uh, J.J. and Jaden Daniels somehow, some way falls to four. Then, then we're really cooking with Greece at that point. We can make a move um, with Arizona. They need a lot of moving parts to get that thing together out there um, in Phoenix, man. So who's to say? But just a few more weeks, you guys, we will see what is going on with this, you know, Jaden Daniels dilemma. I love that these kids are, are having fun on Instagram and, and kind of floating around some ideas and kind of, you know, Throwing some, throwing some shit into the rumor mill so we can all have some fun with. I think this is innocent fun, you guys. Nothing to, nothing to get mad about. But um, I do believe that these guys may know some things that we do not know. I mean, they're football players. They're number one. You know, they're first-round draft picks. Both of them are going to go in the first round. I think they know some things behind the scenes. And I, I think that Jaden Daniels um, knows that the commanders are going to take him, and they're probably telling them behind the scenes, we're going to make a move for your guy, Brandon. That's kind of how I would call this. Um, 
Salute, man. What are your thoughts on reports saying Telesco really likes Knicks? Well, let me say this, Tyree. I was the first person to drop that news. Um, and I got it from a very reliable source. Very, very, very reliable source. I said this months ago when people thought I was tripping. Um, you know, the actual quote that I said was, he wasn't that big of a fan of J.J. McCarthy. He really, really likes Bo Nix. Now, who's to say it's true? I don't know yet. We don't know yet. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I've heard this from somebody that is in the building that has really close ties to a lot of people and salute to my, well, let me say this. I heard it from my guy that has very, very good intel with this particular situation. Let's just say that. But um, I've heard that, you know, he likes Bo Nix a lot. But the Denver Broncos, um, you know, I don't know if you guys seen, there was a, a interview the other day. I don't know what uh, platform it was on, but Bo Nix was kind of, kind of lit up a little bit when, when they mentioned Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. Um, I do believe Bo Nix fits what Sean Payton and them are trying to do, you know, the Drew Brees days in New Orleans. I think that he fits what Denver's trying to do. Sean Payton, get rid of the ball quick, you know, boom, 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 boom. It's kind of the same thing that they did at Oregon, you know, get rid of the ball quick. I don't want to say dink and dunk, but getting rid of the football quick. That's what, that was his bread and butter at Oregon. You know what I mean? And, and also that's a reason why a lot of people kill Bo Nix because they don't think that he, you know, can, can be successful in a different type system. I think Sean Payton would run something similar to what Oregon does is, and get rid of the ball quick and highlight some of uh, Bo Nix's strengths and some of his attributes. So I do believe that Bo Nix is definitely going to be an option there um, with Sean Payton um, early in the first round or potentially if they take somebody else there, maybe they move back up to go get them. But I'll keep an eye on Denver and maybe maybe even keep an eye on, you know, Atlanta in the second round. You guys, they just got Kirk Cousins. They're probably going to go edge rusher there in the top 10. Keep an eye on them if he's available in the second round. They can draft him and, and, and kind of help groom him behind Kirk Cousins for the next few years. And maybe he takes over, um, you know, when Kirk ends up leaving Atlanta. So I don't know. But a lot to unpack with the Bo Nick situation. I still think he's going to be a first round pick. I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't think that he's going to get past the first round. I think it's going to be a run on quarterbacks. I think someone is going to think that Bo Nix fits what they do, which could be potentially Denver and Sean Payton. And um, he goes earlier than most expect, which I think he'll be gone in the first round. Salute to my brother, Hug, man. Love you, bro. Appreciate you, King, as always, the GOAT, man. Salute to my brother, man. Salute, salute, salute. My dog, my brother, man. Salute, man. Also, to my dog, man, GM. Come on, man. Come on, man. I call him the GM. I call him the GM because he's pretty much, you know what I mean? He has the mind of a GM for those who do not follow his, his content, man. Salute to East Coast Gridiron. I DM'd you my number, brother. Hit me if you are in Detroit for the draft. We definitely have to link up, have a drink, and, and, and get some content in, man. Salute to my dog. And let me know, man. DM me and let me know if you're free this week. Let's get a show in. Let's get a show in. Salute to my guy. Um, East Coast Gridiron. If you guys want to become a member like my boy East Coast Gridiron, hit the link. It's pinned up top. One of the best ways to support what we do over here um, at OLV Raiders Network, man. Salute to my guy, Max. I did a mock last night. Traded up three to three for J5. Got uh, Rosengarten, Kyrie Jackson, Eichenberg, uh, Sion Vaki, uh, Prince Pines, and X Weaver. And those are a lot of names that I've taken, actually. Xavier Weaver, uh, the uh, wide receiver out of uh, Colorado. Um, you know, the safety out of Utah. Um, I think he could be a sneaky pickup in this year's draft. Tommy Eichenberg, which if he would have came out last year, he probably would have been a top one of the top linebackers coming off the board. Um, you know I love Kyrie. Uh, Rosengarten, I think, is going to be a guard at the next level. I do not believe he's going to be a tackle, but that'd be crazy. And we're going to do our final mock draft this week, you guys. I promise. Already got the thumbnail, everything ready to go. We're going to do our final, 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 final mock draft uh, very, very soon this week. So stay tuned. Salute to my guy, Max, on the $10 donation, man. And salute to my brother Top, man. Top, are you? I know I I know I I, I changed some things um a while ago. I gotta get my brother Top back in um as as a moderator. Let, let me see, man. I, I don't know if my brother salute to my brother Top Beast, though. This is one of my dogs, man. Salute for always supporting what we do. Let me see. I'm gonna um gotta make my guy. You know, moderator, man. This is this is my dude, man. Salute to everybody here in the building. We're gonna continue this conversation here in a second, you guys. Before we do that, man, wipe them feet, hit them thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, man, make sure you hit that subscribe. All right. So what I'm going to do is. Boom. 
Got him. All right. Let me know if it worked. Top and salute to all the new members because of Top Beast, my dog, my brother, man. Salute to my guy. Let me see. Salute to my guy, Devontae Adams, man. Welcome to the new members. This is facts. Salute to Nav, man, my guy. I do not think Telesco will have much say in this draft. I firmly believe it will be what AP wants. I think Mark Davis will give AP the call. I have to disagree with you, brother. I, that sets a very bad precedent. I think I said that right. Nasty, nasty work. I think Tom Telesco has 11 years, Nav, man, of experience uh, being a general manager, you know, going through the draft process. This is year one with Antonio Pierce being a head coach without the interim tag on him. Um, this is Tom Telesco's gig. This is what he was brought in for. Now, does AP have some say in this? Does Champ, you know, does Champ uh, Kelly have some uh, say in this? Definitely. But at the end of the day, this is Tom Telesco's team nav, man. Um, you know, he's the one that handles the up and up. And, you know, AP handles the ground floor. You know what I mean? So I have to respectfully disagree with you, brother. Salute to my guy, though, Nav, man, on the $5 donation, my dog, man. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to Cheese, man. I hope we only have one quarterback target to avoid settling. Let me see. Oh, okay. I hope we only have one quarterback target to avoid settling. Oh, hey. I mean, hey, man, you have to have multiple um, options out there, man. You have to have multiple options out there. I mean, at the end of the day, man, if you have one guy, you have one guy and, 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 you, and you, miss, you miss out on him, you still need another quarterback. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not sold on Anthony Brown, you know, to be our third guy. I'm just, I'm just not. I know he's athletic. You know, what I mean, coming over from the Baltimore Ravens, I, you know, he's on the practice squad at this point. I'm not sold on that. I'm not. I'm, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, get excited about every move that the Raiders make. That's not one move that I thought, oh man, he could be something. I just think that he's. I don't think he's going to make the team. So you have to have a few more options than just one. Jaden Daniels would be the number one target cheese at that point. If you miss out on him, which you probably will, there's a very, very high chance that you're going to miss out on him. Then what? If Michael Penix is available or Spencer Rattler is available in the mid rounds, there has to be another guy that you're, you're looking at, um, you know, in, in, in the pecking order in the draft for a quarterback. I'm sorry, brother. I hear you, but there's no way you can only have one target. You have to have multiple, especially in this deep quarterback class, man. Salute the cheese, man. My dog, man. Appreciate you, brother. Let me see. Telesco will make the call. AP is not a talent scout. Facts. Facts. Uh, well, Tom Telesco is a conservative drafter. He has all this say because of his experience. There you have it. Salute, man. Salute to Chorizo. Love your show, brother. Come by my place for some pizza when in Vegas. Brother, let me know where, man. Where? I will definitely pull up pull up on you and grab a slice, bro. I would love that. Salute to my, salute to my brother Chorizo, man. My guy, man. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to my brother Rube. My dog. When Telesco said we use free agents, a uh, free agency more than we like to this year, he had me fooled. I know we, I know we will get more roster fillers after the draft, but that statement made me think he'd be more aggressive. So let me ask you this, Rube: Not going out and get one of the top three, top four players in free agency wasn't a big move. I thought that that was him pretty much using free agency a lot more than he would like to, because. Great teams go out and fill specific holes in free agency, and then they go build their team throughout the draft. We made one of the most splashiest moves in free agency. I have to disagree with you. Now, I know what you're saying in terms of more bodies, more people. I mean, we went and picked up Gardner Minshew, a guy that's, you know, played starter. You know, he's, he's been a starter in the league at the quarterback position. You know, he's a high-end quarterback, too. And then we got, you know, our guy Q. I, I, I don't – I mean, Christian Wilkins, my bad. I mean, we, I know we brought back a few other guys, but we brought back, we brought in Christian Wilkins. I think that's the biggest sign. I think that's what he meant. We're going to spend a massive chunk of change on one big time player. And he did that. So I have to disagree with you, brother. I think he was aggressive. I think Christian Wilkins was one of the most sought out football players in free agency. You know what I mean? I know the Texans were probably looking at him. There's probably some other teams, the Cincinnati Bengals, potentially, maybe the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, man, we went out there and spent over $100 million on one specific player. You know what I mean? So I, I have to respectfully disagree with you on that too, brother. I think when he said, you know, I'm going to have to be a little bit more aggressive than usual, that's what he did. He went out and got one of the best players in free agency. Salute to my brother, Top Beast, man, my dog, man. Appreciate you, brother. Wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel yet, man, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Salute to everybody also watching on Twitter. Telesco's job as a GM 
and head of scouts is listening to coaches and what we do. Facts. I agree, Walt, but he also has to have his own mindset. He's going to take what AP says, Patrick Graham says, Champ Kelly and all these other guys say, but at the end of the day, it's still his decision. You know, he, he's the one that finalizes everything. But I hear you, Walt. Salute to uh, uh, get off my line, gang, man. Let me see. Yes, Dodgers everything. I'm waiting for, um, you know, Mitch hit me up and sent me a text. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I'll be over there getting trashed with my guys. It's the off season, man. I'm gonna go have some fun this Friday. If you guys aren't subscribed to Mitchell Renz and Chat Sports and, and my boy Jeremy Chugs, man, make sure, sure you do. I should be over there Friday afternoon. We're gonna have some fun over there, man. So salute to my guys. Let me see. Got running back Madison too. Hope we get some free uh, free agency guard help as well. Yeah, man. And, and, and it looks as though, uh, Matt, that, you know, our guy, you know, Greg Van Roten left Seattle without a deal. So it looks like he's still available out there. I know they were saying that he had potentially a few other teams lined up for some meetings, but something to definitely keep an eye on moving forward. Uh, our, our starting right guard is still available. And I would not be against bringing him in um, at an inexpensive price tag, man, and, and have him be more of a rotational guy and a non-starter this year. Uh, there, there may be a, light, a highly, this may be highly likely, you guys, that, that you know, Mumford ends up moving to right guard and he's there, you know, uh, starting there week one. I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that. Let me see. Got you, Teresa. Definitely. I will definitely come over there and check you out, brother. Definitely. I always want to support anyone that does Raider stuff, man. Facts. Let me see. Uh, Manny, no, no, no. Um, there may be some moves behind the scenes, you know, where, where you know, I mean, they're going to be working the phones like, like always, you know what I mean? But from, if I had to be, like I said earlier in the show, if I had to be a betting man, uh, Manny, I, I don't think that there's a big move out there. And if it is, it's a corner. It's a corner. I think that's pretty much all you're looking at at this point is a corner because the thing is this, you guys, it's difficult, man. It really is difficult to look at the cornerback position when you have an early draft pick like 13, unless there's just like a guy that you know, like a Charles Woodson on the board, right? Or, you know, just, just one of those guys when you knew they were instantly going to come in and take the league by storm. If there was a Jalen Ramsey in this draft available immediately. We don't know what Terry and Arnold is. We don't know what he's going to be at the next level. We, I love Quinion Mitchell. That is my favorite corner out of Toledo in this draft. Love him. But who's to say? We, we don't know what he's going to translate to at the next level. You know, um, if there is a trade, it would have to be a corner. It would have to be, you know, a, a, a Lattimore, a, a Jai Alexander, a Jalen Ramsey, one of those type of guys. It would have to be that. Because I really believe that we're probably going to take a right tackle at 13, you guys. We're probably really going to say, you know what, let's go get Fawaga or one of those guys that are available at 13 um, if they're not sold on one of these quarterbacks, you know what I mean, that, that are going to be available. There's a really, really, really good chance that we're going to take a right tackle um, there at 13. So it, that, that's why I put Stefan Gilmore on this thumbnail, you guys, because I think it would be best – our, our best bet to bring in a guy, and I know that he's lost a step or two. You know, he did get cooked by Green Bay, you know, um, in last year's playoffs. He's getting up there in age. I believe he's 33 years old, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on that. But I would love to bring in the Gilmore and just kind of be a betting man with with um, with, uh, with Jack Jack this year. You know what I'm saying? I would I would love to say, you know what, can you be the guy? Can you be the guy? You know, you, you, you run in your mouth like you are, Jack Jack. Let's see if you could be the guy this year. We'll bring Gilmore in, have that guy be number two, and then he can help bring in whoever we bring in. If it's a Kyrie Jackson or if it's a Cam Hart in those middle rounds, you know what I mean? Like then you can help, you can just wait on them developing and not having to be that guy year one. You bring in a Gilmore, it buys you some time to bring a development, you know, a developmental pro uh, product or a talent, you know what I mean? That you can slowly but surely bring along, you know what I mean? And then just hope that Jacorian Bennett takes the next step in year two, you know, hope that Brandon Faison can give you some real reps this year, you know, without the injuries, you know what I mean? So I would love it. I, I, I'm going to be real. Y'all. I, I would, if, if I am the Raiders, I'm looking at a Stefan Gilmore, a Dory man has dealt with injuries. I know the Patrick Graham connection there. There's some other options available, but I'm just saying, if you could bring in a Gilmore, this, that takes a lot of pressure off of you having to reach at 13 to take a Terry and Arnold or a Quinya Mitchell. You know what I mean? I think that a right tackle is a way more 
pivotal position, especially if you're going to bring in a young signal caller in a year one guy, or even if Aiden is the guy in year two. You know what I mean? You have to solidify the right tackle position. If not, you may be in some trouble. So I think Gilmore would be a great veteran to come in and be kind of that placeholder. You know what I mean? Um, for us for a year or so, let whoever we bring in in those mid rounds that we develop, then we can go that route instead of reaching for a Terry and Arnold or a Quinion Mitchell, who we don't even know are going to what, what they're going to be at the next level. I got my brother in the building, man. You're you're what's up, man? nation? What's good? What's good, bro? Hey, shit, just chilling. Salute, real quick, man. The Raider pace. Uh, why does it have to be one or the other? Aren't they working together? Tom knows the team building and AP knows what a championship defense looks like against the best QB ever. Tom's final decision could be a guy that AP wanted. And there you have, and that you're probably on to something right there, Pace. Real talk. Salute to you, brother, on a $20 donation, man. I got my brother Hammer's house in the building. How you feeling, man, right now? Uh, slow time of the season, man. It's, you know, it's it's been kind of just uh, dragging along. You know, the draft's a few weeks away. Um, I got to ask you, little bro, is there any realistic option out there um, that you're looking at bringing in a free agency at this point, a veteran guard, you know, a veteran tackle, a veteran corner? Is there anybody specific that you're looking at that you would maybe try to bring in at this point? Nope. I'm waiting until after, like, I'm going to wait until the middle of training camp because, you know, that's the best time to do your picking when it comes to free agents. So take it as it goes right now we still need to address certain things especially as it pertains to the offensive line um i mentioned yesterday dj fluker for the second time in as many uh periods as he's been with us is gone once again we never saw thought he was going to see the field anyways he hasn't touched the field since 2020 with the ravens we brought back jordan meredith who did a good job when yeah. his number was called last yep. season when andre james went down he played left guard uh, Parham played center, so I'm happy with that. But we got to figure this stuff out in terms of the draft and what's going to happen. Like, are we taking a guard? Are we taking – or, I'm sorry, are we taking a tackle? Wasted. With that I'm overall? Right I still I'm don't believe right we're going to be moving up right now. Wh which What direction are we going to go as it pertains to the 13th overall pick? I know, and I'm thinking that they're going to lean right tackle. I think that I think they're leaning towards right tackle. I think they want to get that anchor opposite of Colton Miller and protect whoever it is at the quarterback position. We talked about Terry and Arnold, and you you guys know how I feel about Quinn Yon Mitchell. That is my guy. You know what I'm saying? But I, I really truly believe, man, that you would want to find that guy that, that can anchor that right side. Even if you can't like like let's just say we had to run it back with Greg Van Roden, which would be not a great move by any means. You know what I'm saying? But he played fairly well for us, according to PFF last year. If you bring him in and you bring in a stout right tackle, I wouldn't be so much worried about that right side. Or if you just move Mumford, I think that that's what they're going to end up doing, little bro, is having Mumford at right guard. You know what I mean? I would like a, 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 a Fuaga and, 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 <laughs> and Mumford at right guard. I think that'd be I'm a nice thing. I'm, I'm here for that. Like, I'd abs I, there's no way I would disagree with that. And I know you've been talking about the corners. I saw you talking about it before. This is a very deep cornerback draft class. Like, we don't have to get one in the first round. We can no. go third, fourth round and get one. Yeah. Facts. I so still look. Go ahead, brother. We got Jacorian Bennett here still, guys. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. Like, and, and he's been working out, little bro. I don't know if you've seen the videos that he's been uploading on Instagram. This dude is in the best shape of his life. I am looking for a gigantic leap in year two with Ja'Cory and Bennett, man. I think that the few first few weeks kind of threw him off a little bit, you know, adjusting to the speed of the game, that the refs kind of going, you know, throwing some calls his way that shouldn't have went that way. I think it was a mind fuck in year one. I think in year two, he's going to he's gonna bounce back. I think AP is going to put a lot on his plate in year two, and I think that he's going to succeed, man. Salute to Brandon Curtis, my dog. Salute to all the new members, man. I appreciate you, brother. If you guys missed out on becoming a member, Hit the link. It's pinned up top. One of the best ways to support what we do over here at Shieldmore, man. Salute to Brandon. Salute to Flores. Please extend PG for the next few years. F the comp pick. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to Flores, man. Look, I, I, I'm going to be real with you, man. We're talking about Graham here, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm expecting Graham to uh, probably end up being a head coach next season. After, I think the, yeah. the way this defense is going to look this year, Flores, be ready to lose um uh, uh you know patrick graham barring any major setback this year within the defense i think patrick graham finds a a, a 
a home next year where he can be the guy guy. Now, I don't know what that looks like. I think personally, Graham is a defensive coordinator and that's what he needs to be. But I think he finds a home this past this after this next season, because I think this defense is going to be just insanely better than what it was last year. And that's saying a lot because they got really, really good towards the tail end of the uh, last season. Man, salute the true Raider. Would you pack it, package Colton with moves to move up? No, because at this point, you have to find a left tackle. Like, like, like that's a difficult task in itself. Now, do you want to move Mumford to left true? Is that what you're saying? Because all you're doing now is opening up another hole. Now, do you go get, if you get Jake, would you let me ask you this? Would you package Colton Miller, a starting left tackle, one of the better left tackles in the NFL that goes under the radar year in and year out to go get Jaden Daniels? Because, because then at what, what, what are you giving up? You're giving up a bunch of first, probably a bunch of draft capital and Colton Miller. That's a difficult task, man. Who's protecting this blind side then? There nope. you have it. I don't nope. know. You know, so, you know, and Colton, man, has been a dog for us. He's been a dog for us, man. I, I just, I don't see that happening, brother. Um, you know, unless you have just like, if there was the sure thing that you're moving up to get, but I don't, I don't see it. I, I'm Colton Miller is going to be a Raider probably until he retires, man. Salute the true Raider, my guy, man. Um, Ronnie, I got to disagree with you, man. I, I don't think it was anything with effort. I think, I think realistically, you know, he just, he just checked out a little bit because of the calls, you know, they, they were, they were 15 yard penalty here, you know, 10 yard penalty there. I think it just. It, it, it got him out of his psyche in year one. I, I don't think that it showed any bad effort. I think McDaniels I mean, played a part in it because McDaniels does not – look, we talked about this yesterday with O'Connell and how he really didn't develop him all that well and pretty much tried to do a see I told you so shit when he started him against uh, the Chargers. Now we're in that situation like you could look at the same thing when it comes to Ja'Cory and Bennett. They didn't develop him. You had yeah. other guys in those spots – you weren't getting it like he wasn't a, a certified starter. Give it time. Just fucking he was a rookie. He's got to learn the speed of the game. And again, and at the same time, again, McDaniels with the handcuffs on the defense. Yeah, it's going to be different for Jacory and it's going to be different for a lot of these guys. And I've talked I talked about Tyree yesterday. Tyree, you guys are going to be in for a rude awakening for all those people that said he is a bust. He's a wasted pick. Da 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 da. Watch. Let me see. Salute the rule, man. If we draft the right tackle, best bet would be move Parham to right guard where he played his best. Mumford seems comfortable on the left side. Would be good to have our second best OL next to a rookie OT. I'm not mad about that, but I, I think that Mumford and I mean, I think that Parham and Colton Miller is kind of built a rapport on that left side. Yes. And I mean, you know, Parham has looked a lot better, Rube, when Colton is out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he looked a little more shaky with, you know, Mumford playing, get, getting some reps at left tackle. But um, I mean, that's that's going to happen with a young player losing his anchor on the left side of him. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of people want to move par him to center right guard. I think realistically keep him on the left side. I have to respectfully disagree with you, Rube. But I hear what you're saying and I understand why you're saying it. But um, I would keep him on the left side and just continue to build that right side up. And I think Mumford will look good at right guard. Um, and then you just go get your guy, Fuago, whoever it is. If you had if you if the draft was today, Hammer, and you're a betting man, man, who, who, who are you taking at 13? Well, who are not you? Who are the Raiders taking at thirteen? If they're smart. They're taking Fuaga. Okay, so you, you're we're, you're we're we're here then on the same on the, on the same thought process. I, I keep seeing two. It's it's one A one B right now. It's either him or Latham, but I'm seeing Fuaga a hell of a lot more. So I'm going with Fuaga right now. Okay, salute to John, man, my dog. Once again, the goat. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to all the new members once again in the building. If you guys aren't subscribed to our little bro also, man, go to Hammer's house. You know, he has a phenomenal show over there, man. Make sure you hit that subscribe button over there. And also hit the join button on his memberships as well. Almost to 9,000 subscribers over there, man. Salute, salute. Salute to Geo. Take care of the most important position in the first round. With all these QB hungry teams, I doubt any franchise guys drops to the second round or below. I, I know, man, it's just, it's, it's just a... Man, like I, I'm, I'm not mad, Gio, if we take Penix at 13. I've said this a million times that Penix is one of my, if not favorite quarterback in this year's draft, not named Kayla Williams. You know what I mean? Like I, I love what he brings to the game. I think he's going to be a dog at the next level. I think he will stay healthy. I think a lot of people are looking at those previous injuries and just putting too much, highlighting too much of that and not highlighting what he's done at the, at, at the highest level. You know what I mean? There's a reason why he's been, phenomenal these past few seasons he's he's got over that hump of being injured 
you know, little bro. And, and he's, he's gotten better as a player. He's run up, he's ran a lot less than he did at Indiana. So, you know, he's found a way to still be very productive, not utilizing his legs the way he did in Indiana. You know what I mean? So I think at this point, he wants to be a, po a pocket passer to protect, you know, um, himself from injuries as well. And that's the kind of guy you want, somebody that can get loose when need be, but remain in the pocket most of the time, and, and, but can utilize his legs if, you know, the pocket collapses. I, I think that MP, uh, I think, I think that Michael Pennis Jr. can be the best quarterback in this year's draft. I know a lot of people may say that I'm tripping. I do believe that he could be that guy. It's just a very quite, it's a big question of, do these guys think that he can? And I'm telling y'all now, it is not a lie. AP loves Aiden O'Connell. He loves Aiden O'Connell. I'm not, I, I have nothing against Penix right now. Like, look, granted, he had the injuries. Guess what, guys? Combine, medicals came back clean as fuck. All those injuries were how long ago? Let this dude cook. Let him do what he could do at the next level. Like, I've said it time and time again as well as it pertains to quarterbacks in the first round. It is a crapshoot. Yeah. We've seen it year in and year out where these guys are supposed to be these big-time players. A lot of them are thrown to the wolves incredibly quickly, and we see what they do in their rookie year. Look at uh, Bryce Young. Yeah. What does C.J. Stroud do? Oh, rookie well, of the year, nice playoff run. And that I, I said it yesterday, that Texans front office, they're not fucking around right now. Nope. They're going to they're run with this kid on this rookie contract. And they're going to build that team up to the best of their ability. They got digs last week. They wiped out the three years remaining on his contract. He'll be a free agent. They're not messing around. They're all in right now. They have to be, though, because of the mishaps with Deshaun Watson and all that draft capital that they got. They have to make it work. Like, I'm actually happy for them that they're getting it done. But, bro, there's a lot of pressure on those guys to get it done with all those draft picks that they got and moving on from their franchise quarterback. You know, the Texans are doing this thing the right way. Carolina is just a poorly ran franchise. Salute to Chiefs, man. What will we value our 13th pick at if someone wants to move up? I mean, I'm assuming this, Cheese. If you want to move into those that 20, 20 range somewhere up there, give us a second round pick. You know, give us an additional second. There better be an early second, though. Hey, because, because then you could potentially package up those two seconds and move back into the first and go get a Michael Penix if he drops. Or if Tom Telesco really wants to go get Bo Nix, you can get your guy. But all I'm saying is, you got to give me a second round pick. You got, you, you got it. Penix stays in the first round now. Who? Penix. You think oh, he yeah. stays in the first round? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't see Michael Penix leaving the first round at all. And if he does, we are in for a ride because if we get him in the second, that is the still with a draft, bro. Tell me right now, Michael Penix Jr. is going to be that guy, bro. I'm saying it now, bro. And, and I just hope he doesn't go to a situation where he's thrown to the wolves. You know, what I mean, I don't hope I hope he just doesn't end up in a situation like like Bryce in year one where he's playing behind a, a shit O line. He's running for his life and he doesn't have any receivers. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know, man. I, I, in the perfect world, we get Michael Penix in the second round. If not, Penix probably ends up somewhere, you know, where they have a veteran quarterback. He can sit a year or two and they kind of do the Jordan Love kind of situation and bring him, that, bring him in a year or two down the line. Salute to Hug, man. Hammer, where'd you get that beanie at, bro? <laughs> I can't with y'all. Love you, bro, bro. <laughs> Salute to John, my guy, man. Salute to Max. Um, no disrespect to Colton, but I'll sell him to grab J5. I think we can keep Mumford on the left side and draft the right side of the line. Well, the problem is at this point, Max, if, if you move Colton right, and you, let's just say that works, and we move Mumford to, to, to left tackle, then where do you get your right tackle at? Because you've probably gotten rid of a lot to go get J5. So are you betting to maybe take Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame in the third round? Or are you are you are you gonna bet on a Frank Crum in the later rounds out of Wyoming? It's just it gets a little nerve wracking there because you have to give up a shit ton of draft capital and Cold Miller if, if Cold Miller is a part of that that trade to move up. So it just it creates a whole nother a whole nother need. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can't. I can't call. I can't call Jaden Daniels J five, because every time I hear it, I instantly think of that robot from Blank Man. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the Detroit, with the Detroit Tiger hat on and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, salute to East Coast. I don't think it's a crapshoot. It's the teams they go uh, to that setup that set up them up for failure. They draft off of can't miss potential. You know what? The team fit into the That's game. valid as shit. And I'll right. give you a prime example because I say it year in, year out. The New York Jets. That is QB purgatory. I don't give a shit that Aaron Rodgers is there now. 
We see the list of quarterbacks before him and guys that they took early. Yo, those quarterbacks, that's where their careers go to die right away. Cleveland has turned that around. You can't call Cleveland QB purgatory anymore. No, no. But the thing is, you you know what? You can. Because Watson hasn't lived up to the hype yet, little bro. Like, yeah, like he's up. been battling injuries and his other twenty-four problems. But like, doesn't matter. It's, it's, quarterbacks. It's still, it's still a problem. It's Look at Mayfield, problem. though. Look at Mayfield. Um, the kid out of UCLA, they're high on right now. They do like this kid. DTR, DTRs look bad, bro. In, in when they when they throwing him out there to the wolves to be the starter. That's why they went out and got an OG to come in. And, and get it done for him, you know. What I mean, a uh, Flacco man, but at the end of the day, Cleveland still has they still have to shatter that that stigma, bro. And they haven't done it yet because Deshaun Watson hasn't played at an all pro level. When you make a trade like that and you pay him all that guaranteed money, that motherfucker better be Tom Brady reincarnated, bro. And he has and he has been fucking probably Derek Carr at best. <laughs> I'm just being real, bro. You know what I mean? So I mean, no no shade that you know DC man, have, you know. F that. No 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 no. He wanna. Oh, I'm going to pick a fight with Max. Nah, I don't want to hear it. And fuck DC. He's having some fun with his guy. So look at Ticket Mavis. With the existing team in the upcoming draft, what would be your no weaknesses for Chris Jones' offensive line? Well, I, you know what, Ten Commandments? We already brought back Andre Andre James. So, I, I, you know what I mean? And, and Chris Jones has owned him in recent memory. So uh, we already are not going to get that done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like he is bullied that kid around for many years now, Put but Mumford we are changing right our guard. scheme. We're changing our Put, scheme. Put Mumford at the right guard and let us draft a tackle in the first round. And I think that, uh, I think Jones might be handled a little bit differently. No diddy. No diddy. <laughs> Salute the top beats on a 10 P special, man. Penix offers the Raiders the best bang for our buck. No way Penix is on the board at 13, but I think he'll be available at 10. Maybe Penix is the man that I think is going to surprise a lot of teams. I agree with you, big bro. Okay. I truly do. And, and I seen um, a mock draft, I believe, that had us move up from 13 to, where was it? Was it nine, eight, nine, and going up to get Penix just to make sure that we got our guy? Who who did that one? That's the first time I'm hearing about this one. Yeah, I, I got to go find it. You know what? I'll, I'll bring it up during the show at some point, but it, I forgot who it was. They had us moving up somewhere from 13 to that, Seven, eight, nine range and, and taking Michael Penix. Because the one that I'm seeing the most right now, and it's where we take Penix, is in the second round, we keep moving up. One one mock draft, and I saw this one, I think, last week, had us moving up to 36 and getting Penix. Another one that NFL.com came out with yesterday had us moving up to 33 um, and getting Penix. And that's the first pick in the second round. So I'm like, that's very interesting to see. Yeah. Max says Christian Haynes at right guard and find a right tackle too. Hey, Max, I told you guys this. If you get Fuaga and Cooper Beebe back to back or Fuaga and Christian Haynes back to back, you have one of the best right sides of right o sides of an O-line in the NFL for years to come. Real talk. I, I would I would absolutely not be upset about that um, if that's the way that we went. I know it's not the sexiest move, but if you get the potential Pro Bowl, all pro talent in Fuaga and the potential all pro Pro Bowl talent in Christian Haynes out of Connecticut. We may be cooking with grease here, man. Just, you know, just depend. At that point, though, you got a question: What are we doing at the quarterback position? It's probably going to be Aiden O'Connell at that point. Um, salute to my brother, man, Rick in the building. Brave Raider. Salute to my guy, man. Um, Raider John, stupid. He says Graf is like no shade while he opens up a proverbial umbrella on all the car stands. <laughs> salute, bro. <laughs> my dog, man. Salute to East Coast, man. My brother. Salute, man, to all the new members because of East Coast Gridiron, my guy. And I just got your text. Uh, right now, East Coast. You just let me know when you're available this week, bro. I do this for a living. So you let me know when you're available. I'll make it happen, bro. Just let me know. I want to bring East Coast on because what I want to do with East Coast Gridiron, he's a Jacksonville Jaguars fan, but he covers the draft. He covers college football and he's really good at it. And what I want to do is have him give us some sneaky pickups from the third to seventh round. I don't even want to talk about the first or second. I want to find some interesting names that we may not have even heard of. Even us guys that dive into the draft process, something crazy. But East Coast dives, 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 dives in. You know what I mean? Breaks down film and all that good stuff. So I want him to do like a th round three through seven where we can find some potential steals at some maybe the corner position, running back position, some late round receivers. I want to do that. And East Coast, look, there you go. Oh, yeah, that's my bread and butter. We, we There we go. So salute to my brother, man. Um, I'm going to ask you a little, bro, <clears throat> and mind you guys, this would have been on both our channels, but Hammer has some great things going on today. So uh, we had, I had to do this last minute. 
um, yeah, make say, say a prayer for little bro, man. It's definitely, um, definitely needed right at this point. It's, it's good. It's good things though. It's good things. Um, I'm going to ask you, man, we talked about this previously, but Hunter Renfro has not gotten any looks at all. You know, there, there've been rumors up to this point of, you know, the Cowboys potentially, you know, you know, looking at him. Um, we heard, we all heard the new Orleans saints. I think we were one of the first people that really kind of put that thing together. Yep. They haven't looked this way yet. There hasn't been any talks about, um, Hunter Renfro. I believe he'll be 29 years old this year. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how time flies, bro. Think about that. We dra it feels like we just drafted him a few years ago and he's already about to be 29 in December, I believe. Um, at this point, I mean, would you, would you rather, go look at a potential steal in the later rounds at the wide receiver position, or would you want to bring in a guy, Hunter Renfro, that's already familiar with everything that we got going on? I think he would come in for a cheaper price tag because of Christian Wilkins, his best friend in the building. I'm just saying, would, would you want to bring him home if, if the price tag was right? Or, or is his days just numbered in LV and he's just not the guy that, that, that he once was before? We don't and, know. And, and by the way, so like I say, the sonic rings have been knocketh out of himeth. We don't know the scheme right now. We, we don't know what the offensive playbook is right now. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, as it pertains to him, would I bring him back? Yeah, I'll bring him back on a league vet minimum. You're not getting that bag that you got before. One year deal? One year deal? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, what does that I, look like? Really because there's no market value for him. I couldn't find it anywhere. Maybe you can find the it. The market, the market is dry as hell right now for the services of Hunter Renfro. Like, and didn't I'm, I'm thinking about New Orleans? Didn't they get rid of Michael Thomas? Yes, he's a free agent. Who do they have? They have Alave and who else? They have the speedster. Uh, the, oh, we, I picked up the kid in fantasy a lot. Um, who was the guy in the slot? Let me look that up, man. I know somebody probably. I, I'm it, very, I'm very surprised. Was it Sheed? That, was Sheed? Sheed? I'm surprised that DC wasn't kicking and screaming trying to. He breathe probably is. Like, probably is. I, I think that. I think that. <sighs> Right, yeah, Rashid Shahi. Rashid Shahi. I think the further that we go into this offseason and get closer into training camp, there may be a team that'll give him a shot, maybe see what he can do throughout the preseason and might be lucky to make the 53 man roster. But it's crazy. I'm man. not sure if it's going to be us. I don't know if they're going to take the flyer and bring him back. A former Pro Bowler had over 100 catches in one season, had over 1,000 yards receiving. And and we're talking about him potentially getting a shot in preseason. That's insane, man. But um, they they do have Rashid uh, Rashid Shahi, and they have um another guy in that draft that I loved out of Wake Forest, At Perry. So they have some young receivers over there that they're probably going to groom a little bit. And they got Alave, who's going to be probably one of the best wide receivers in the in, you know in, in in the NFL in the next year or so. He, he's a he's a dog. Salute to Nab, man. Penix. Um, went early in his career. I love it. Has the right attitude for the nation. However, we got to link the left, the LA spin that none of our wide receivers have experienced, uh, or the left handed spin that none of our yeah. wide receivers have experienced. Also, O line shift on protection must plan accordingly. That was That's a right. great, great comment from Nab, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, look at, look at Devontae Adams, his whole career. Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr. Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo, and now Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, yeah I, and that, that's the one thing when we talked about Penix months ago was my only, like, was my major concern. Like, he is a lefty. Like, yeah, it'll be different for the receivers, but at the same time, like, you would have to get a solidified right tackle to protect his blind side then. So it, it's something that I'm kind of just trying to bypass at this point because I do feel that this is probably going to be like the last option we have. Like um, I know Joe yesterday talked about uh, the kid from Florida state, Travis as a potential option, but like, yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. You can give the kid a full year to learn and recover, but I don't know if I want to go that route. If Penix is there for us, pull the trigger, but you better get the right, right tackle to protect him. There's pros and there's cons to this. In a perfect world, you, you get Fawag at 13 and you find a way to trade back up to get Michael Penix. Then you have your right tackle and you have your, your quarterback of the future. I mean, that would be the greatest way to go about this thing. But um, I, I love what Walt is bringing up too, man. He's bringing up um, uh, McConkie, the, the wide receiver out of uh, Georgia. 
in, in a lot of Hunter Renfro comparisons, you know, the white slot receiver, you know, I, I think he's going to be better than Hunter Renfro at the next Bel- level. Belichick's not in the league anymore, so uh, he can't go to New England. No, I, I think that he's going to be a dog, though. He's going to make some team really, really happy. And like I said, I think he's a better – he's better than Hunter Renfro. I do. I think he's going to make some type, some team really, really, really happy. But he kind of reminded me – I hate to just because of the white wide receiver. You know, I loved Alec Pierce, remember, coming out of Cincinnati in that draft, and he really hasn't done a lot for the Indianapolis nope. Colts. So I, I don't nope. really know – you know, um, but I think that this kid is more of the short thing, way more of the short thing. He, he's a dog, bro, and his route running ability is insane. Salute to Ben, man. Go ahead. Top, I think Minnesota is going to trade with uh, the Chargers. I, I think that New England is going to stand packed where they are at three. I think they're another team that does need a quarterback, and it's probably going to be Drake May. But I think the next trade that you're going to see is probably Minnesota moving up with L.A., and Minnesota taking JJ McCarthy. Okay, so you think um, Arizona stands pat, and they just they just they they just take the uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. route? Yeah. Okay, I, I can definitely see that, man. We ain't stopping Houston's offense. We need Michael Penix Jr. in case of a shootout. Salute to Ben. I don't know, man. I mean, look, Ben. Let's let's keep it a buck here, Ben. Okay. Think about this. C.J. Stroud is in year two. He's still really young. Okay. A lot of those weapons that they have are unproven. You know, I know they got Mechie. You know, from Alabama, they got Tank Dale, which I love, but he got hurt. Guy. He got hurt last year, you know, late in the season. And who's to say that the Dells don't linger on? That, yeah, they got Diggs. He's getting up there in age. He wasn't the same player he was last year. They got like, Nico they, Collins too, though. And Nico, I love Nico. Nico is a fucking yeah. dog, man. They got Mark. They, they they got Joe Nixon, which I don't know. You know, let's see where he looks. What what he looks like at this point in his career. And then they got another great. Uh, well, I, I think he's going to be great, Damian Pierce. I know he had a kind of a down season last year, but now they have that one-two punch. I think he's going to be better, but there's still a lot of question marks with that offense, bro. I'm not saying that they – I think they're going to take the lead by storm. I even said that they could potentially be in the AFC championship if Ooh. they can stay healthy. I, real talk, I believe that. But wow. there's still a lot of question marks. Still a lot of I – mean, they're young. They're, they, they still got to prove that they can get it done um, in year two. So I'm not just here to just, you know – here, take take it. You're the best team in the, one of the best teams in the AFC. They got to earn it. But if they can stay healthy, and if CJ Stroud takes that next step this year in his development, oh yeah, man, they, they're gonna be cooking with grease. And you know, I love Tank Dell, man. But he's a he's a he's a <laughs> he has a smaller frame, really short. You know what I mean? And and, and the one wrong hit, and his his noodles is took out. You know what I mean? Like let's just yeah. keep him up. So you know, salute to Ben though. Salute to Ant, man, my guy. Appreciate you. Free agent wide receiver market is slow because of deep wide receiver draft class. Agreed. He'll likely sign after the draft, just like OBJ, which, you know, it sounds like he's going to sign with Miami here very soon. Um, Tyler Boyd, which I, I haven't heard anything about Boyd. I, oh, you know what? I'm lying. I heard the Chiefs were connected to him, and I heard the Niners were connected to him. That would be insane. Shit. You know, with, with, the, with, with the Rice situation in KC, I could see them going out and getting a Tyler Boyd. And a Michael Thomas, I, I don't know if the slant guy is going to get a job. You know, he's been unhealthy for a long, long time. So I, I don't he know. Blames Carr for the recent injuries. Yes, yeah, exactly. Crazy. You've been injured your whole career. You want to blame that shit on DC? Insane. But I agree with you, Ant. I definitely do, my brother. But um, at this point, what do you pay one of these guys, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have loved OBJ to bring just got <coughs> OBJ just got $17 million last year for what? For 500 for yards what? and three touchdowns. I... He got if you paid pay for it. Any of these guys that type of money again? Y'all are smoking DND. He got paid for his name, but there's some names out there, and we talk. You, you pretty much mentioned them right there. Those are the names right there. I I'd rather go get one in the draft, really, really, you know, really cheap, and just run it. You know what I mean? That that's how I would do. Just draft a wide receiver instead of paying one of these guys big time money. Unless Hunter comes home for it for a really inexpensive cheap deal, I'd be cool with that. I don't know what Getsy Getsy may say. Hey man, I, I I can I can I can get Hunter right. The system. Is tailor made for him. I don't know. Maybe he says we're going to get him very active. We're going to bring him back. I don't know, but just not at thirteen million dollars. That price. Nah, we good with Trey Tucker. I love Tucker too. Love him. Um, East Coast says I agree. Houston's going to kick our asses again. He's a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. I got my iron underwear on for that. <laughs> Yo, East Coast is stupid, man. Salute to Demarcus. The left-handed bias. From some is real. Laugh out loud. Tyreek Hill adjusted just fine to Tua. Just protect MPJ blindside and let him cook if drafted. Talk that shit, Demarcus. 
Talk, Demarcus. Tell all of us we're all wrong. We're all wrong, man. Salute to my guy, man, Demarcus. Wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. If you are not subscribed yet, man, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, let me see. Let's get some questions in real quick. Um, uh, Martin says OBJ was that one catch. Hot take. <laughs> Cheap is Graf's middle name. Factory outlet, brother. Fact factory outlet, brother. Let me see. Um, I honestly think the development of Zay Flowers was worth it. I mean, he's gonna be a superstar, bro. Yeah, you watched him out of Boston College. This dude has been phenomenal forever. Uh, measurables wise, him and OBJ are liking a lot of uh, a lot wise and got Lamar and MVP. Ravens are probably thinking money well spent. There you have it. I mean, and you know, if they were one game away from the Super Bowl. Yep. But so, he's not I'm telling you now, moving forward, he's not worth $17 million. Not right now, not right now. He's not. Yeah. Hey Zon, what's up, my brother? I think I missed this super, man. Salute to my brother UA. My apologies, King. Um, guys, we've been told that O-linemen aren't as important in his own scheme. Could we go cheap there? Put Mumford at guard, um, go late. Round right tackle. Mm. I don't think so, man. Because because you uh, you're either running with a year one quarterback or a year two quarterback. You have to have that O line intact, brother. You you can't just go with some type of just oh you know what we're gonna just see if this works. You have to have a plan with you know James Craig has to have a plan with him and Getsy. There has to be something there. Where I'm, gonna, like, I'm gonna go put ahead. it this way: the later you go in the draft and look for an offensive lineman, the more work that they're gonna. The work is going to be needed for them to develop. I'm not taking that chance right now. Yeah, I, I think everybody said no band-aids, right? I love what Clint said. Everybody said no band-aids about the quarterback position, no band-aids on the offensive line. You know, Super Bowls are one in the trenches. When you look at all these Super Bowl winning teams and teams representing their conference that may not have even won a Super Bowl, but you look at it, there's always one thing in common, the trenches. The offensive line is intact. The defensive line is intact. I don't really – when was the last time a, a team won the Super Bowl with a terrible low line? Now you can win one with a, 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 a you know middle of the of the pack O line if you have the right quarterback, but but you gotta you gotta get it right. But seventeen is right though. UA um, Crum is one of those guys you can look at. Frank Crum out of Wyoming, which I don't think he's gonna be a seventh round guy at all. I think that he's gonna be gone anywhere from that third to fifth round. I think Crum did some did some things at the combine. I heard some really good things uh, in terms of scouts talking about him. I don't think he's going to be a sixth, seventh round guy. I think he'll be somewhere in that third to fifth round. Uh, Zon, I think you might be right. Because their offensive line was not that great this year. No, they had a good old line, but at the end yes. of the day, but at the end of the day, once again, though, what did I say? Quarterback. You have, to have the right quarterback for that situation. And you have the best in the world in Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes. You know what I mean? So he can improvise more than anybody in, in, in the league. You know what I mean? So – um, and then what do they do, Zon? Even if they did backtrack a little bit with their line, they built that defense up. That defense that, that they went insane. You know what I mean? So either way, you got Patrick Mahomes, and even if you did take a step back with your line, their D line was phenomenal, and their defense was insane. Let me see. <laughs> Top, hey, hey, bro. Hey, we met Zon in real life, dog. Like you might be on to something, bro. <laughs> You might be on to something, bro. Salute to our brother Zion and Top Beast, man. Let me see. Uh, he said, Matt says, Flowers needs to get his shit. He did He did get kind of knocked around on that play, though, Matt. You know what I mean? It was a little ugly, but, you know, that was nasty. Fumbling the ball, what, the one, two-yard line? It was nasty work. Let me see. Uh, Mondo, my guy, man. Coffee and convo with that. it. Oh, you guys, I'm about to drop the content T-shirts, and I'm dropping the that shit ain't leather shirts on oaklawsvegas.com. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on the new um, the new designs. Stay tuned. We got that. This shit ain't leather, man. We He's going to make a jacket made of pleather. Hey, I'm telling you, hey, I'm telling you, man, that shit ain't leather, man. Hey, it's on the way. Oaklawsvegas.com. Go get you some gear, man. I'm telling you. We, we, we're doing. We're putting shirts out with every goofy thing that we say out here in these streets. Let me see. Um, yeah, Alex Leatherwood ain't leather at all. At all. Alex Pleatherwood. There you go, Al. Talk that shit, bro. Uh, Hug says, you need my shipping address, girl? You're one of the first people I'm, I'm thinking about with all this new merch, man. I got you, Hug. Salute to Jenny in the building. Uh, salute to Clint. Diggs is a true milk content. <laughs> Yo, 
Um, I definitely think. Let me. I mean, if on a scale of one to ten, no, Diddy. On a scale of one to ten, right? What do you think, Hammer? Like, what is is, is there a realistic? Because to be real, I'm, I haven't put this outside of my mind yet. Like, I'm a. I, I've thought about this in Detroit. The Raiders have moved up to number three. The New England Patriots and are now on the board. And and and, and Jaden Jaden Daniels being available because Adam Peters goes McCarthy or Drake May. I mean, realistically. Is there a real option that, that you – is this realistic at this point? No, because New England's going to be asking for a hell of a lot more at this point. If we were going to do something like that, we should have did it last month. It, the, we're two weeks away, man. Whatever teams that are in that top five that we're looking to try to make some type of deal with, they're going to be asking for a hell of a lot more than they would have a month ago. I yeah. don't want to go that route. And you lose a lot of draft capital in order to do it. Salute to yep. Spivey, the Kevin Nash of Shieldmore, my guy. Salute to my dog, man. Uh, hug, hug, just with the random hashtag booty hole. Real ones, no. Real ones, no, hug. Real ones, no. Um, the Raiders always make one pick that makes you think, why? Who would be that pick for you guys? You know, it's funny, man. I think, Mike, and I've said this on previous shows when asked this question, I think it'd be a receiver in the first few rounds. <laughs> like, realistically, bro, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 think told, I said it to you last week with um, Maurice Jones Drew's uh, mock draft. He, he has took, a third take at bro. 13 take on a Dunze. And I was yeah. like, what? No, but if Rome is available at 13, is that a, is that a tough discussion to have? You like, 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 I mean, Rome is he could be a phenomenal pickup. He's bro. already yeah. getting the comps of uh Devontae Adams. What, what if, you, if we were to draft him and he were to learn behind Devontae Adams, that would be insane. And then think about it you get Rome and then you trade back up to go get uh Michael Pennis Jr. and boom, you already have that rapport. Had the ti the tiger combo. There you have it. Then you got Devontae with the the who he's comp to on one side. Come on, maybe nasty. Yeah, we saw we saw the we've seen the Tiger combo work before. Look at um Sensi with Jamar and uh Burrow. Yeah, so, uh. I love Xavier uh Leggett, man. Uh, the, the measurables are there. I always love those South Carolina um wide receivers, man. You know, even though one of those guys burned me in, in you know in one of our drafts, you know, I thought he was going to be the next. Well, not the next T.O., but like T.O.-esque. And we already know who that is, right? Um, I, I don't want to really talk about him anymore, our former third-round pick. That just didn't really fit the uh, fit what we were doing out here in these Raider streets. Um, but but he, he's a dog. I, I can definitely see him being gone in the first two or three rounds. Um, and true says it put Myers in the slot. I put Devontae in the slot. Shit, move them around. Move them both around. Devont bro, bro, a lot of success that Devontae had in Green Bay was out of the moving around. And yeah. him in the slot. Yeah. And guess who was there? Getsy. Luke Getsy. Luke Getsy. We're going to see a lot of Devontae in the slot this year. They're going to move him around a lot. Uh, Richard says, Bowers at 13. Imagine those two hour, uh, two tight ends. Says, uh, there's rumors now, Hardy, that Indianapolis is trying to trade up to get him. Really? Yeah, that they're trying to trade up in the first round to go get um, uh, Bowers, man, out of Georgia. So I can definitely see that. Be, that'd be great for them. Anthony Richardson, they have a, a nice dynamic uh Playmaking tight end and with those receiving options that they have, those young guys, I can see it. I have a feeling if that doesn't if that doesn't happen, then he's going to the Jets. I can see that. I could definitely see that. Um, let me see. Who's a surprise pick? Salute to Tano in the building too, my guy. Who's a surprise pick that you can see us taking at thirteen? Someone that a lot of people really aren't talking about that much. Where it's a like surprise pick for us. It doesn't have to be a a, a running back or a wide receiver. It, it can still fit a, a specific need, but a player that maybe like it could be a right tackle. It could be you know the young yeah. out of Washington. It could be the young kid out of P, uh, uh, Penn State. I mean, you know, who, who was another guy? There's if we had, if we if we went out really outside of the box, first running back off the board, Jonathan Brooks, running back out of Texas. Damn, then you're gonna go Texas with this bullshit, man. Come on, man. No, I shouldn't even ask him that shit. I already knew where he was going. Uh Mims. I'm saying that would that would be something that's like outside the box. Like, what the fuck did they just do? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Kane, Kane Town, my brother. Yeah, Brian Edwards definitely eats corn a long way, bro. Um, okay, no he's supposed to Graham Barton. I, I would trade back if that was the case, though. I love the guard out of Duke. He's a dog, bro. But I, I if you can move back. You know, into the 20 range and pick up some extra draft capital. I wouldn't be against picking up one of the best guards in this draft. Definitely. I can I see that. Devin, Byron Murphy's I not really is a shock, bro. No, no, not at all. 
Not at all. I don't think that's Jazar. He's lost a lot of of momentum going into this draft. I got this not dropping like that, bro. Like, I got him, I got him falling to the second round at this point, bro. Wow. Wow. At the top of the second, top of the second, but but even so, like this was a guy that both of us had been talking about months ago. He had a, he had a minor injury, I believe. He didn't perform at the combine. I think that kind of killed his stock a little bit. But this was, potentially was a top ten pick at one point. Max Tavondre, I'm questioning right now, and we might as well. We didn't have this discussion, so we might as well have it with the DWI charge that's pending right now with Tavondre Sweat. Do you think his draft stock drops? And at the same time, if you're in this front office, if you're in Henderson. Are you still willing to give him a shot, maybe getting him in the third round or no? I would. I would. But he's meeting with the Seattle Seahawks and the uh, the Tennessee Titans, Titans right now. Yeah. So there, there's two teams that still there, – there's teams that are definitely going to look at him now specifically because his draft, draft stock dropping. He's got a lot of work to do in his personal life. But, bro, if he's there in the third round, go get Tavondre Sweat, dog. This guy is a – could you ima imagine him and Christian Wilkins together? You can't run, you can't run the football. You guys know how I felt about that. I, and I, I I had him on my draft board over and over and over again. But, like, with this shit that happened, and we go back to last year's draft with Jalen Carter and the due diligence and shit, and I said it last year, and I'm still standing by it. Like, the best thing to happen for him was to be drafted by the Eagles, being surrounded by his former college yeah. teammates. Yeah. At least they know that they can hold him down, no ditty, and make sure he doesn't get himself in any shit. Well, with the Raiders would be the best. us – Best bet for him. You got Max next to him, a guy that practices sobriety in his life. Yeah. Christian Wilkins, a guy that is a firecracker, that is all a team, team, team. He's a, he's a dog. You got Malcolm Kuntz, a very humble, just go about his business the right way type of guy. Then you have veterans like Adam Butler and John Jenkins that can teach him about the NFL. I know Vegas would be a scary situation thinking about his partying days, you know what I mean, and all that other stuff. But I would take a flyer on him all day. I think that defensive line would put their arms around him and be like, look, kid, it's time to get it done. Salute the space beats. Now, Cooper is going to be a safety now at this point. And I think we're pretty much good at the safety position. I know both our starting safeties are free agents after this year, but I do believe that we'll pay our young kid, Trayvon Merrick. But Cooper's going to be a safety. I wouldn't want to – I'm not sure – I'm not drafting a safety in the first round. I want to see Merrick repeat what he did last season. Like, And I said last, his third year was going to be out his, his breakout year. I want to see him repeat what he did last season because that kid is, will definitely get a bag. Yeah, man. Oh, Walt says sweat going to Cincy at 49. Oh, I mean, bro, Walt, if you live in Cincinnati, you're probably going to drink even more, bro. Like, you know what I mean? So ain't really nothing, ain't nothing really going on out there, man. Salute to Ant, man. Take best tackle available at 13. Hopefully, Waga um, or Olu, then trade back in the first round, 25, 30 range for next year's one and next year's two. Take Penix thoughts. Um, I think that's a lot to give up to move up to get Michael Penix, but I would definitely give them a second this year and maybe a, a, a third or fourth next year to move up. I would do that. I would definitely do that if you're going to secure your uh, your quarterback of the future. But that's just a lot, brother, to move back up, to go up one round, coming from the second back to the first in that range, to give up a first and a second next year. That's a lot. That's a lot. Salute to Antho, my guy. But I see where you're going with this. I think you're on to something. I just think that's too much draft capital. No, okay. Um, I really don't think. Oh, so you got him playing at a uh, uh, corner then, East Coast? Okay. I, I just I have this feeling, man. After his pro day, you know the speed element. I, I got a feeling they're going to play him as, as safety, and that kind of sucks because I think he loses some money in terms of safety to corner. He may lose some draft some draft capital because of you may drop a little bit down people's boards because of being a safety. I think it's going to be a safety, man. Now that you guys are mentioning that with the safeties, now I'm curious. Now that you guys mentioned it, like. uh how many safeties are going to be converted to linebackers when they're drafted this year? Because we know that's an ongoing trend now. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of them. I mean, there's only a few that you know is not going to do it. But yeah. and you know what, man? This isn't – and that's one thing I wanted to talk to East Coast, too, because I know he does his homework. This doesn't seem like a, a very deep safety class. I mean, there may be some sneaky guys. I like the kid out of Penn State, um, and I believe he met with the Raiders as well. Um, I believe he went to what, – what's it called? Brig uh, the, the high school out there in Vegas? Huh? I know what school you're talking about. I can't Big high school. I, I believe he went there. Um, oh, and also, you guys, for those who don't know, we met up with Carson Steele also, the running back from UCLA. We had we had a workout with him, I believe, the other day. Um, and there's ties to him all. Oh, yeah, yeah, except for uh, Tyler Newbin. I like Tyler Newbin. Even though East Coast says stay away from him, I like him out of Minnesota. That's one of my guys in this draft. But 
Carson Steele was interesting because their former running backs coach in UCLA ended up being our running backs coach for about a week. Then he took the head coaching position back at UCLA. Then weeks later, Bishop Gorman, that's the high school we're talking about. Um, then weeks later, we're out there at UCLA. I believe Antonio Pierce was seen with him um, in UCLA. So there's definitely that Southern, Southern California connection. Carson Steele, white running back, six foot, has all the measurables. He's a dog, bro. I, I wouldn't be against bringing him in to to help add to that running back room with with Zeus and and uh, Madison. That'd be that'd be actually a sneaky move for us. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We're going to get a back in this draft class because of the lack of depth right now that we have in the backfield. Like we have Zeus, we have Madison, we have Amir Abdullah. Yeah, there ain't nobody else behind them. Mm -mm. I like Cam Kitchens as well from Miami. I'm just saying East Coast, it's a thin safety room to me. I mean, safety class. It's not a deep safety class. You know, you got Tyler Newman, you got Cam Kitchens, you got, you know, like you said, Jaden Hicks. There's a few other names out there. Um, the, the young kid out of Utah that I think would be a, a sneaky pickup for somebody in those later rounds. But I just, it's just not a deep safety class to me. Salute to uh, Patrick B., my guy, on a $20 donation. I think the only reason people are talking about Penix in the first round is lack of pro ready talent at the quarterback position. I can't wrap my head around paying Penix uh, round one money. Mm -mm. Only time will tell, Patrick B. Salute to you, my brother. But um, pro ready talent. I don't, I, I got to disagree with you, man. I, I think that he's pro ready. I mean, what, what, what is your actual take on Michael Penix Jr.? I know he's not your yeah. favorite. I know he's not your favorite quarterback in this year's draft, but I mean, what is your actual like? What what is his ceiling in terms of player, and, and where do you see him actually performing at the? I end think of with the right team that he could be the face of a franchise for years to come, as long as the dude stays healthy and they keep his ass up. That's it. Like pause. No diddy. Um, I I think that you let him let the kid cook. Like my only concern for at least for us is that right side of the line and who's going to be the one to protect him. But I think he should have a solid career in the league. I think he's, he might, and you guys can take this to the bank. I think he might outdo a couple of these quarterbacks that are drafted before him, including Bo Nix. I think he might be a little bit slightly better than JJ McCarthy. And it might be a toss up between him and Caleb Williams. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm still questioning that offensive line in Chicago. I, I don't know what to expect. And if Caleb ends up going to uh, Chicago, which he will, he's going to be in for a long 18 weeks, man. And Drake May is a guy that I feel like is not talked about anymore. This guy was supposed to be a second overall pick. I think Penix is going to be better than him as well. Yeah. Oh, talk hammer. Talk. Salute, man. To my I'm back, bitches. <laughs> I told y'all, man. Everybody kept coming here. What's going on with Hammer? I said, man, Hammer's taking a break. He'll be back. You know what I mean? And and, and all that good stuff, man. So come on, man. Y'all y'all should I'm alive, y'all. <laughs> y'all should already know, man. Bro, bro is always going. He's always going to be be home with his bros. Salute to William, man. What's up, Graphic Hammer? Is the only way? No, go to WoodsonWhiskey.com. Leon, you can order bottles on the website. Once you're 21, you go in there, type in your birthday, all that good stuff. You can actually order bottles on WoodsonWhiskey.com. I still have not cracked this bottle, and I don't think I ever will. Never do it. That's a beautiful bottle, bro. If I got that, I never, I never would. Never would. Salute to Ant, man, my guy. Um, and, and salute to Devin Smith. Facts. That the, the, the Michael Penix Jr. hate is not tolerated, King. <laughs> it's not tolerated, King. It's not. Salute. Let the Penix rise. Full <laughs> Diddy. <laughs> Yo. Oh, all Diddy, bro. All Diddy. <laughs> Nasty work out here in these streets, Aunt G. Salute to my guy, man. Uh, we talked about Hunter Renfro and, and why he's still a free agent. And I, I agree with you. I think once training camp gets a little closer, I think, you know, why receiver needy teams are going to look at the former Pro Bowl. I don't know what that money's going to look like. But I still, I think personally, there is still a chance that he'll end up in Las Vegas. A Raider. I do. I do believe it. The New Orleans Saints are definitely a team. Dallas Cowboys, definitely a team to keep an eye on. Um, potentially even the Carolina Panthers. You know, he can Panthers, go do the Titans need a slot? I don't know. I don't know what they have out there right now. I wouldn't. And you know what? I might have to make a phone call this week. Now that we're talking about the Panthers, I might have to make a phone call this week. And um, salute to the fam. 
<laughs> salute, salute to Brandon, salute to Rob. I love you guys. Um, they lost their mom about two weeks ago. I uh, just had the funeral services last week, but I love you guys and Aunt Lois. Miss you, love you. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to reach out to Rob. We're gonna have a conversation and see what his thoughts are about potentially bringing Hunter Renfro over to Carolina because he's a receivers coach over there now. Okay. Salute to JP, man. Docs, what do you think in the move is to address the cornerback one position? Um, I, I realistically, bro, and I've said this since day one, I think we have our cornerback one on this team. I think that's why you go get a corner two. You potentially go get, you know, a Gilmore or an Adoree Jackson, and hopefully he can stay healthy, or a Xavion Howard in free agency, and you just run with what you got. I think you have the guy. And then you go draft some guys in the middle rounds, and you hope that Jacorian Bennett develops. You hope that he becomes that guy on the other side. But um, I've been saying this since day one, JP, go get you a, a corner two in free agency and then go get a Kyrie Jackson or go get a Cam Hart in those middle rounds. Bring bring another guy in, uh, you know, a lengthy corner that can that can battle it out uh, for one of those spots. But where where do we see Max Melton now? Has, has his draft stock like shot up? Is this guy now potentially a second rounder or is he still kind of third, fourth round? No, I see a lot of second. I've even seen some mock drafts taking him in the first. You know what I'm saying? I think he'll be a late round, a late second round pick. I do. That's still a guy I would love to have here. Yeah, he's a Absolutely. dog. Man. He's definitely a dog. Um, Demarcus, that's that's man. You know, the, the thing is this, it's kind of difficult to look at that because Emmanuel Forbes had an ins had, had insane production, Demarcus. For those who don't know, you know, Emmanuel Forbes was one of my favorite uh corners coming out of last year's class. I know he had a pretty rough rookie year. Early on, he was looking pretty good, then he had a rough year, but you know, at school, man, he was one of the, I think he had like six pick sixes to the crib. Like it's insane. The production that he was putting up, um, you know, um, at Mississippi state, but, um, I don't know if there's really any cornerback in this year's draft that has that much production. Like who, who would be the guy this year that, that had that many pick sixes or that much, that much production. I, I couldn't really tell you. I don't think that's a Terry Arnold. I don't think that's a Kool-Aid McKinstry. I don't even think that's a Queen Yon Mitchell. So, um, that's a tough one to go off of DeMarcus because that guy had a shit ton of production and ended up going where I think he should have been a first round pick. He just went to a bad situation with the commanders, man, a terrible, terrible situation. Um, yeah. And Clint, I agree with you, man. Forbes is on that Deron Bland type shit <laughs> facts, taking him to the crib. Um, spaces, Emmanuel Forbes was 5'11", 166. That's why he got benched. Last I checked though, space, he put on like 10, 15 pounds. I thought they had him up there somewhere below, around that 175 to 180 range. I could be wrong, though, but I, I could have swore that he put on some more weight, and that's what they were talking about. And, and think about this, too, right, Space? If you put on more weight, that's a transition in itself. You know what I mean? You got to learn how to operate with more weight on you, man. He was a skinny dude in college. Very. You know what I mean? So, but, um, Docs, you hear anything about this Corey Curtis quarterback from the XFL coming to the radar? Are you talking about the, the, big, the big white kid, right? Uh, I think he went to Ohio State. Um, what, what's his name? I think he plays for what, – what team does he play for right now? I haven't even watched any of the games yet. I, oh, like, yeah. I think what, they're, what, two weeks in? I haven't watched a single game yet. <clears throat> Let me see. Football. I thought this was the, the, the kid that played at Ohio State. I know he had a, pri a private workout with us, and I think he had a private workout also with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there's a few teams that are looking at him. I know the measurables are there. I know some people, he'll be the next big Ben. No, he's not, you guys. He's not. Um, but I haven't, I haven't heard any update on that. I know that the Pittsburgh Steelers are meeting with him. Um, and I know there was another team, I believe, that was meeting up with him as well. But um, he goes to Gannon University right now. So this is a guy that kind of bounced around at the collegiate level. Um, last year, he put up a, a shit ton of, uh, production though i'll tell you that but i'm not really looking at it but yeah troy he came in for a visit definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. eight men has been eating in the ufl i haven't i haven't watched a single game yet well i get to go watch our brother gary on conley play our other brother uh marquette king this saturday marquette yeah marquette uh called me yesterday or the day before and said i got four tickets for you and the fam i said i'm pulling up i'm That's pulling dope. up so it's gonna be difficult who am I going for? The Renegades or the Defenders? I love Gary on. I love Marquette. I'm just going to go full Raider gear, man. Fuck it. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, definitely space a deep corner class. Um, East Coast says, okay, Curtis has been balling. 
Okay. Well, what does this production look like this year, East Coast? I know you said you covered the uh, UFL. Let me know, man. Um, I need 99 likes and a Willie ain't one. <laughs> Yo, wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, man, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't know why Hug is saying that, but I'm here for it. Salute to Hug, man. Um, <laughs> He's a man. He says, Graf always. Nah, man. I, I love to share my experiences with you guys, man. Because I'm telling y'all now, I started this shit four years ago. I was nobody in this shit. I was nobody. Just, just a fan. Just a fan like, and, and, like everybody else. The same shit. Like, we're all the same in this. You know what I mean? I just want people to realize, man, if you if you believe in yourself and you think you can take this shit to the next level, and you, you can get relationships like this and do some of the things that we're doing, man. You know what I mean? So, brother, brother, trust me, man. I am just like you. The same person, bro. Just a fan like you that loves our team. But um, I've, I've, it's been an honor to, to, to develop some of these relationships that I have and look at some of these guys like, like family, man. And Marquette definitely is, a, is, is family. I told him the other day, I said, bro, come over to the house, man. If you get tired of staying in your Airbnb because of the UFL, you come over here, you got your own room. You know I mean, that's my guy, man. Uh, salute to uh, Daryl, man, my dog. If Penix is our guy, we will more than likely trade back with Philly. I've done this in a mock draft at 22 to get him. With that scenario, what do we get in return and how will that change your mock draft? Love y'all. Salute to Daryl. So you're saying we would trade back with Philly to 22. I'm assuming we get a second round pick. But what is Philly moving up for? Oh, you know what Philly could be doing, right? Don't they need a corner in like the worst way possible? They do, but they could be, bro, they could be replacing Jason Kelsey. Oregon, Jackson Powers. Yeah, go see that. You know what I mean? So, but I'm assuming if we do that, you got to give us at least a second round pick. Give us a second. I'll take a second. Give us a second round pick to move back to 22. You still get Penix, and then you have two seconds, and then you can go get your tackle and your guard in a second round. Boom. Your right side and your quarterback position is sewn up. Could you imagine that there? You move to 22, you get Michael Penix Jr., you have two second round picks. Now you can go get one of those right tackles that may fall, or you can get a Blake Fisher, and then you can get like a Cooper BB or a Christian Haynes. I would love that. I would love it. Salute to Daryl, man. Salute to Nav, man, my guy. What do y'all think of the video from Jack Jones ripping the pads? I talked about this the other day. I thought it was hilarious. And I think that more guys need to do this shit. You know, he's protecting himself just because these people are millionaires, bro. And they play the game at the highest level does not mean that they're not human beings like all of us. But it's you not the mean? first time that he's mentioned it either, because no. he said it in a press conference after one of the games yeah. this past season about the difference between the Raider way and the Patriot way. So, yeah, that's what it is. Facts. I loved it. <laughs> I, I think I think it was per perfect for him to go on his platform and absolutely obliterate the fan, that the side of the fan base that keeps saying that he ain't shit. I think a lot of people don't realize all the racial stuff that he gets on Twitter from that fan base, all of the disdain that he gets from that fan base, them talking about his gun case and saying that he gave up on him and so on and so forth. At some point, you have to come out, man, and defend yourself. And that's what he did. And now he's going to leave it alone moving forward. So I love it, bro. I love it now, man. I'm all for, you know, these guys going out here and, and letting motherfuckers have it. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. Because somebody said in the UFL, I was like, he didn't play. Um, in the UFL, but he played at Bryant University. Was wasn't an amazing year, but his arm is as strong as Joe Milton. Definitely, I seen him throwing the football the other day. It was insane. It was insane. That kid got he got some arm strength for sure. Um, let me see. Hug says, "Graf and Hammer, your heart and passion for our shared nation is unmatched. We love you, dog. We love you too, bro. We value and appreciate the work you put in and the friendships you foster on this channel. Grind and shine, man. Thank you, brother. That means a lot, man. Thank you so much, brother." You got a few more minutes, Hammer? You said, man, I ain't got shit going on right now, man. We chilling. Let me see. Uh, once again, hug. Love you, bro. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, man. Foxdale, a lot of people found me after that show. <laughs> Became a fan of your show in 2021 when we, when we went to ATL and got blew out. I had a, um, I had a massive blowout at the airport at Ludacris's Chicken and Waffles restaurant in ATL where I was literally screaming at the top of my lungs about that game. Yeah. So that was the game where Josh Jacobs ran over that DB and got called for lowering his helmet. And we got absolutely obliterated. Nasty work. Salute to Spivey, man. My guy, Jack Jones had me rolling on the floor. Raiders. Facts.
Facts plus text. Salute the uh, East Coast. Y'all got me effing up this spreadsheet. Distractions. Yo, I see that you may be available tonight. East Coast, I'm going to let you know. I may have something going on, but if not, brother, let's do it tomorrow if you're free. Tomorrow night or any other time during the day, please let me know, brother. We'd love to bring you on and um, and talk some draft stuff. And I see somebody else also mention Scout. Scout is in school. He has been going crazy at Appalachian State. He's also um, a scout. He also works as a writer for multiple websites. So he has a lot going on. You know what I mean? So we're all kind of just in, in busy season right now. Scout will definitely be back. We've been talking about it for a while. Trust the process. So that's that. My guy on the $10 donation. Jacorian Bennett is a three to four year project. Raiders want the cornerback that will outthink the wide receiver route running with him in sticky coverage and break on the ball before he does like Dion did. And Jack is now. See, I wouldn't say a three or four year project, Jacorian. You know what, man? I, I say that he he turns a corner this year, which isn't really difficult because he didn't really do a lot last year. But I think the third year is usually the guy, the, the year where most of these guys turn the page. You know what I'm saying? And so if you're going to say three, four year project, I, I think a third year guy. I think the third year he'll finally figure it out. But he's going to take it. He's going he's going to take a turn. He's got to take a turn this year. You know, what I mean, he didn't get a lot of burn last year, and I think that he's going to see some more reps this upcoming season. Salute to S Dot, my guy. I appreciate you on a ten dollar donation, man. Um, get some more questions in you guys before we get out of here. That scouting life is draining. Laugh out loud. I got multiple colleges hitting me up about some high school guys. Tape shout out to him. I love it, man. And, and busy is a great problem to have, man. Let me see. <laughs> Salute the brave, bro. <laughs> my dog, you stupid, bro. That's my brother, man. Said meeting graph in person in Vegas was like meeting Jesus. <laughs> Yo, don't say that, brother. That's a lot. But I love you, bro. I love you, bro. Salute to my guy. Um, oh shit. Look at her, man. 78 more likes and a 40 piece gets dropped on the chat. Who wants to be members, you guys? Who wants to be members? Salute to my brother Hug D's. He said he's dropping a 40 piece special. If you guys can get 78 more likes, if you haven't hit that like button yet, hit that like button, man. Hug ain't playing today, bro. He said, I'm dropping a 40 piece special. A 40 piece special. Salute to my guy. Wipe them. Feet. Uh, let me see. We could do a mock draft real quick, too. We definitely could. Salute to my brother, Top Beast, man, and subscribe to the show, my guy. Uh, Brave, I see it. We could definitely do a mock on the way out. It's been a little minute. I have my final mock already drawn up. You, you, have you done your final mock yet? No. No? You haven't done it? I, haven't, I really haven't been. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I haven't looked at any of that stuff. I didn't even know, bro, too. I, I've been watching the shows with you and Joe. I forgot that that's TQ's guy. Bro, I had no idea, bro. Yeah, I, man. I watched Q upload something on Instagram the other day. I was like, I was like, bro, we met him at, 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 at Barcode. I never yeah. knew that, bro. So that's why Joe. I mentioned it to you the other day. And, so. I, and I love it because, bro, like, he actually knows his shit. So when, I, when you guys do your shows, I'm like, I love this because it's two people that love this team and know what they're talking about. But then I was like, oh, I put two and two together. I hit a wasted. I said, bro. That's Q guy. I said, I, I had no clue. Salute to Spivey, man. My dog. Appreciate you, brother. Man, salute to all the members, man. Salute to all my people that show love over here at Shieldmore and OLV, man. I appreciate it, man. Let me see. Uh, oh, she said, oh, we're at 350. Only 50 more likes. Get them likes up, man. Let me see. Um, I love that you took Ray Davis also in that mock. <laughs> I love it, bro. I love it. It was so crazy because I got that text and I was just like, wait. What the fuck? I was like, hold up. I, I, I text, I text Mitch your number. Cause he was like, I think Hammer's taking a break. Um, I'm gonna get somebody else involved. I said, no. I said, hit up Hammer, he'll do it. Like I said, he'll do it. You know what I mean? He was like, okay, cool. Uh 30 more likes and we're close. There we go. 30 more, man. And, and our guys are gonna throw some um throw some support, you know, to the chat, man. Um, what'd you think about that mock draft? I, I want to ask everybody here because we didn't really get a real opportunity to talk about that. And I know, I know the second round wasn't um, popular in the nation. Um, and we're going to have him on in the next few days this week. You guys, our brother, San GT will be on the show. Um, 18 more likes, you guys hit them likes and, and a bunch of people are going to become members. But what'd you think about round one? I took Terry and Arnold. If that's how, if that's how it pans out in East coast, I agree. Edwards out of Georgia definitely deserves more love. The running back. He's a dog. I don't, I didn't like it because like I said, we have so much, we have other priorities and other needs and a very deep cornerback class. We did not need to go 
for Terry and Arnold um, in the first round. Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. Well, Arnold, Bo Nix, um, Peyton Wilson, Brennan Rice, Ray Davis. Um, I think uh, Hancho took Caden Wallace, I believe, the tackle yeah. from Penn State. Um, Scout took Gabriel Murphy. And then Kenny King took a linebacker out of Cincinnati that I wasn't too familiar with. I wasn't really too familiar with him, but I started looking up a little bit of his game. He's more of a project, but I'm not mad about taking a project like an Amari Bernie in the sixth yeah. round, like a, like, a, like a linebacker. So I wasn't too mad, but you took my guy, man. I love it, bro. I love it, dog. I love it, Ray. I, just, I thought it was a, it was a conscious decision for the simple fact that we need that depth, and this guy can do a little bit more um, than some of these other guys, and potentially in time could be a starting running back in the league. So I was here for it. Salute the top beast, man. My brother, man. My guys are going crazy in here today, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Real talk. And do me a favor, y'all, if y'all can, because I didn't see Hammer's uh, number move up at all yet, man. Hit that subscribe button on Hammer's channel if you can. If you got to leave, hit it, pull back up. That number should be at least 8,900 8, a today. Let's run it up for little bro. Top beast, my brother, you've been around forever. I appreciate you so much for what you do for all of our channels, my brother. You and Hug, y'all are the goats, bro. Salute to the new 40 members in the chat, man, my guys, my dogs, man. I appreciate you guys so, so much, man. My people, man, hug and top. Definitely the my fathers, uh, other shit, the goats, man. The goat moderators, my guys, man. Salute, salute to Q. If y'all haven't um, looked at another cornerback to look at. Oh, and that's another guy that's going under the radar right now, Q. is Kamari uh, uh, Lester, bro, out of Georgia. And some people had him in the first round um, early on in mock drafts. But this is a second round guy at this point. Uh, if you haven't done your homework on him yet, bro, look up uh, Kamari out of Georgia, the corner. He's a dog. Ray Straw is nice also out of Missouri. Josh Newton, TCU guy. TJ Tampa, we all know who TJ Tampa is. Um, Chris Abram Drain. What school did Chris Abram go to, Q? And then DJ James Auburn, right? Um, another guy that, that could be a sneaky pickup in this year's draft. You named a lot of kind of guys that are going under the radar at this point, Q. I definitely agree with you, man. Um, yes, yeah, I said Mitch went ham on Sanji. He gave him an F. <laughs> Definitely. Salute the real talk, my guy. But he said, Yeah, I'm all about Ray Davis. That's my guy. Um, let me see. What the fuck is it? <laughs> Road home with Derek. He said, What what the fuck is a members only show? Is that like in bro? It's not an OnlyFans, brother. It's not an OnlyFans. <laughs> it's not an OnlyFans. Let me see. Um Let's get a couple more minutes in, you guys. Salute to Robert, my dog also, man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, man, so much. My dog gifted five more um, OLV Raiders Network memberships, man. You guys are the best, dog. Salute to the 1,300 people in the building right now. Um, Walt says, do a proper four-round mock. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Let's do a realistic mock, something that is not what we want. It's going to be a Tom Telesco thought process okay like like let's think about you know in the past he, he loves his own line um you know it, previously i've seen him take a, a a nice number of linebackers in his drafts uh, with the charges also um seen him take some wide receivers last year two of them out of tcu which i think he was planning ahead because he knew that they were potentially going to move on from keenan allen um you know and, and their other guy you know what i mean who just got a shit ton of money out there with the jets um, but let's do it. You want you guys want to do a draft on the way out? We can definitely do that. Uh, graph, if you haven't seen Chris Abrams drain, he's a first round corner that people crap on for whatever reason. I've been screaming his name all year. Ennis is not better. Oh shit. I definitely gotta do my homework then. I definitely because I'm I'm sleeping on I've, I've heard the name, but I don't know what school I don't I don't I haven't seen any of his tape. What do y'all think about selling our future for a quarterback that is 60% to fail? To me, as bad as we need one, we'll have to wait. Uh, we'll have we'll have to give up a lot. Uh, for the four. So Rage is basically, basically saying, man, stand pat. Stand pat. There's, there's no for sure thing that you go up and get Jaden Daniels. He ends up being the guy. And Rage, I, 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 at this point, I kind of agree with you, brother. Like, I think in a, in a perfect world, you can just take Penix at 13 and continue to build that defense up. That's going to be the strength of this team moving forward. We're a defensive-minded football team. Salute to Rage. Let me get these supers in real fast before we do this. Salute to uh, Ben. Still hearing Dak rumors. No, there's no rumors about about Dak Prescott. It's not going to happen, Ben. I know some people are just still kind of keeping that in the algorithm. He has one more year on his deal with the Dallas Cowboys. They'll probably find a way to extend him and keep him around or 
he'll walk and get a rich deal somewhere else. But I, 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 I think CD Lamb's going to be a free agent as well. And I'm I'm hearing that the Cowboys are, are like are really sick of uh, Micah Parsons as well. Rumors, bullshit. As someone that lives in Dallas and, and knows a few people out here, you know, within the area, uh, that's bull. That's absolute bullshit. All that Micah Parsons shit is cap, you guys. Now there may be some older guys that are in the in, in the building that don't like that he podcasts and he talks about everything. That's the that's the way of the world now today. It is what it is. These guys are finding new ways to bring in new income. You know what I mean? And, and I love that Micah does that on Bleacher Report because he needs something to rely on once once his career is over. I love it, but I think that it may be some older people, maybe maybe it, it, within. Somewhere like, oh, we don't like him kind of spilling the beans and so on and so forth. Man, get that shit out of here, man. Micah is loved in this area, you guys. I'm telling you now, I went to the Mass Crosby. Um, uh, 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 what do you have out here? I forgot what he had, like a camp out here. With Von mm -hmm. Miller, Micah, people love him. I got a chance to sit around him for a few hours. Phenomenal human being from what I got a chance to see. I don't know him personally, but he seemed like a really, really down to earth guy. Don't listen to that bullshit. Mike is going to be a rich man out here in Dallas. I would pay him over CeeDee Lamb. Real talk. And I love CeeDee Lamb. But I, I just, it's very difficult to find a player that can play two positions like Micah Parsons, get to the quarterback. It's just, it's levels to this. They're not going to move on from him. Complete rumor. Uh, but Dak, no, man. There's no reason for that. Salute to Spivey. Hugs and top. Major salute from the stay off the line guy. Salute to my guy, man. Salute to my guy, bro. Appreciate you guys. Yes, and if you became a member, your name turns green um, in the comments section. There's mem new members everywhere, man. It, it, Y'all are crazy, bro. Um, do, uh, Foxdale, what do you mean? In terms of what? In terms of what? In terms of what? Let me, let me bring this up. Mock draft. Mock draft. Okay. Hold on real quick. Let me bring this mock draft up real fast. Get rid of this window, this window, this window, this. All right, boom. I'm just going to use the same mock draft that we always use. Let me see. I'm going to go pro. All right. Wait, what the fuck? All right, cool. All right, Hammer, I'm going to give you the first round, and then I'm going to go take the second. We'll go from there. Sounds good. All right. No trades. And I'm not doing any bold predictions. I'm doing. I'm going to go off of what I think Tom Telesco's thought process is behind this. This would be a phenomenal pickup for that pick, though, dog. Could you imagine that? 29, 61, 73. God, damn. You can potentially still get Michael Penix at 29 and get all that extra draft capital. What the hell is Detroit trying to get? Yeah, I, I don't know, bro, at that point. But I'm going to get that. It'd probably be another edge rusher. Yeah, no, I'm not taking that. And right now, they would probably take Latou out of UCLA. He'd be a dog opposite <laughs> the young pup that they brought in from Michigan, bro. That'd be nasty work. All right, so let's keep it a buck here, man. You're Tom Telesco. All right. What are we doing here? Let me see the quarterbacks real quick. All right. I think it's going to be Bo and uh, Penix. Yep. All right, go back to uh, the offensive tackle. Don't oh, crap. Go OT. Fought new. I'm going. Um, oh, guys off the board. Oh yeah, he yeah, went to play. Right before, before us, because it looks mm. like. Uh, wait a second. So, the Broncos traded to two. Yo, what? Oh, so I'm want going with Fatanu. So you're gonna take Fatanu here. Yeah. Okay. Young pup. Penix is there. Now, let me ask you this, Hammer. Realistically, is he available here? I think there's a good chance he, he could potentially be there. So you think that it's th – that it, this can actually happen? I think it could. Okay. But I also think that they're going to do something where we're probably going to move up a little higher in the, in the second round and get him. I don't think he's going to be available here. So I'm not going to take Michael Penix Jr. I, I, I just – I don't realistically think he's going to be there. And, you know, Fatanu, man, you, you took him in the first round. He better be the guy, bro. Because I have seen a lot of people saying he may potentially be a guard at the next. I think you missed, man. J.C. Latham. But. It's, and it's been a toss-up. It's been a toss-up between Fuaga and um, J.C. Latham. Okay. So, look, 
He's not he's not going to be there. Penix is not going to be there. So what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm at all right now. Tavondre is going to drop, even though he won't in this mock because they don't know about his DUI. But um, I'm going to look down. Max Melton is available. Cooper Beebe is there. Um, the thing that's scary is, man, I don't know, you know, if I knew, you know, the guy you took may be, he may be the right guard of the future. So let me see. And you put Mumford at right tackle. Cooper Beebe's available, man. Let me look at uh, – so Cooper's there. I can take Mason McCormick in the next round, but I may have to take my guard here, but I just don't know. I, I really believe, bro, that you may have took our potential right guard of the future there. Let me see. Cooper Beebe. I'm going to go back to all. Damn, man. This is nasty work right here, bro. You kind of set me up for failure right here, little bro. <laughs> I, I fucking hate you, man. Um, Kitchens, Braylon Trice, Peyton Wilson's not a – I mean, he, he wouldn't be a reach right here. Braden. Damn. Should I have to go corner here? Second round, who's there? Take Max. <sighs> nah, man, I'm, I'm going to play this safe, bro. I'm going to take – the best card available, which is Cooper Beebe. So we have an offensive line. Yes, we do. Now it's Aiden O'Connell season at this point, brother. <laughs> we are run we are running with Aiden. These are the best players available. Fisk is still there, which we had a meeting with him the other day. And a lot of people keep saying that Fisk may not be there, you guys. I I'm gonna be real. He may be available in the third round. This Mel is Kuyper, Mel Kuyper has him as number one. Byron Murphy is two. Tavondre Sweat is three. I don't know. I mean, I, I just – this is a deep class. And, and and I'm talking about each position. That's why Fisk may still be there. There's a run on quarterbacks, run on wide receivers, run on right tackles, run on guards. The running backs are not going to be a run right here. I think that run goes kind of right – like in that third, fourth round right here. But he may be available. Van Pran added another name to his last name. When did that happen? Granger? Wow. You're going to call that man four words. All right. Okay. Cor um, here's a corner right here, though. Yeah. See who's. Now, Chris Abrams Drain is there out of Missouri. Um, DJ James, Renardo Green. Now, James would be a sneaky name here. Um, Kalen Green, Kyrie Jackson, Cam Hart. I think one of those guys would be available in the next round. Um, any of these names catch your eye? DJ James is another name, bro. That he's a sneaky corner in this year's draft, and I wouldn't Look be shocked. running backs real quick. Oh shit! In the third round, huh? We're not about getting a quarterback. I want to see what's available. You about to make some motherfuckers mad? <laughs> Jalen Wright is there. Um, Braylon Allen, Bucky Irving, another guy that can help you in the passing game, also, and Jalen Wright, two guys that can help you in the passing game. I'll take DJ James. Okay, smart. I, I think that was, I think that's the right move. Go get you a corner right now, DJ James. All right. So we shored up already three positions that were most pivotal to us outside of the quarterback position. Um, there's no quarterbacks here at this point. I mean, you could take Jordan Travis and just kind of redshirt him. Um, Joe Milton is there. Maybe we can get one of them in the next round. <sighs> this is where I'm probably going to look at the running back position. We got guard, tackle, corner. Let me see. <sighs> Damn, I want to take Ray Davis. Like right. <laughs> um, wide receivers. I love Malik Washington. I love Brendan Rice. I love Javon Baker. Another name that a lot of people aren't talking about. But um, this is a little too early for me to go get one of them. I'm going to go running back probably right here. Um, let me matter of fact, you know what? Let me see what linebackers are available. Real quick. I know you like Jalen Ford. No, I not not that high. See, Spites would be available later. Darius would be available out of UCLA a little later. Um, I like Eichenberg, but I don't want to take him here in the fourth. Could you see us pulling another running back in the fourth round, pulling a Zeus? If, if this guy is going to be carrying – any one of the load, like if he's getting any percentage of the carries throughout the regular season, then yeah. Matt, I, look, Matt, they brought Madison in, but like Madison has not been consistent 
and he's a bit of a swing back. Like he could probably catch out of the backfield better than Zeus, but I'm not really a thousand percent sold on him. And Zeus, we need to see more than that four game small sample that we saw at the tail end of last season. I took Jordan Travis, man. Okay. All right. What do you want to do right here in the fifth? So we got a quarterback in the fourth round, you guys, someone that we can develop, get him healthy in year one, and hopefully he can uh, he can take off moving forward. See what QBs are uh, available. I'm just curious. You know, I just took one, right? Oh, you took a QB? Yeah, I just took I just took um, uh, Jordan Travis. My fault. My fault. The running backs um, are still it's still deep right now. This like this is the run right here in the fifth round because Bucky Irving is still available here in the fifth round. Um, Audric is there out of Notre Dame, which is my guy. Jalen Wright, bro, he's a dog, bro. Like that. You can also get Limmer here, the OC. I mean, the um, the center here, if you wanted to, just to just in case Andre James ain't the guy. Do we still got Parm? Uh, I'm going with Bucky. Okay, I like that. I think that's actually a great pickup right there because once again, he can give you um, some production as a receiver, also. Yep. Okay. Now this is where we can have a little fun right here. I like um, Siavaki right here, the safety out of Utah, man. I may, I may double down that corner though. I may double down that corner right there. I might get spites. Go for it. But I like Pritchett though. I do. Like I, I, we need as much help in that corner room as possible. I might double up right here at corner, man. Shit. Let me see what edge rushers are available. I want to see if my guy out of Colorado State is still there, and he is not. But Gabriel uh, Murphy would probably be available in the next round. So I'm not going to play any games right here. I'm going to go ahead and look at – I'm going to take Pritchett. I'm double dipping, man, at corner. Are we in the sixth round? Go to the receivers. Okay, this is where it gets a little interesting right there at the receiver position. Isaiah Williams is a sneaky pickup. Anthony Gold is a guy that's going to be a returner, you know, kick returner, but he also can give you some reps at the receiver position. Xavier Weaver, bro, another guy out of Colorado. I think he had like 700, 800 yards this year. Wasn't the number one option, but um, uh, you want to go to all and just kind of take a look? Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not. You can get the safety. You get another safety there just to, Double back. If Chris Smith and Paula Mao ain't the guys moving forward, you can have a third option if Marcus Epps, you know what I'm saying, and, um, and, and Merrick Walk. I mean, that's Jay not- Barner because Ooh, I like we, that. Okay. we only have two uh, tight ends right now. So you get a tight end right there. Okay. Now, I like, <laughs> I like Miles Cole also. Texas Tech can give you a hmm. – little reunion with Tyree. Yeah. I'm trying to see – Jan Reed, man, I know it's a smaller school, but he's he's a dog out of James Madison. We took running backs. Damn, I, I forgot Jaquan uh, Shepard would be available later on. We actually had a top 30 uh, meeting with him. I'm going to take Gabriel Murphy right here, get you another edge rusher. Could potentially be that um, Malcolm Koontz in this year's draft. So, all right, grade this, you guys, if possible. Uh, we got Fatanu right there at 13, uh, Cooper BB. DJ James, so I, that, that's three starters right there for you immediately. We got no linebacker. I know that top, but what the thing is, we can get some UDFAs. And I think that um, Antonio Pierce would definitely find a gem or two right there um, in, as UDFAs. Yes, we could have got – I missed out on Omar Spites, and I wish I would have I wish I would have probably took him somewhere right there, but I think Gabriel Murphy was the better pick. Um And once again, you can find a receiver also as a UDFA. Remember, you guys, Antonio Pierce was a UDFA his damn self. You know what I mean? So, and Tom Telesco, you know, he has found a few gems as UDFAs in the past. You know, I mean, look at Austin Eckler. So, um, Edgar, at this point, bro, we didn't take take a quarterback in the first two rounds, so I had to just kind of pivot a little bit there, and I took Jordan Travis. It looks like it's an aiden season in terms of this one right here. So, 
Five new BB, DJ James. I think that's three starters from day one. Jordan Travis, the guy that's got the red shirt for a little bit. Bucky Irving, he is a guy that's going to be a phenomenal pickup for you. You can run the football and, and catch the football. Uh, Pritchett can potentially be another starter down the line. I'm going to be real with you. A guy to play great at Auburn. Uh, Barner, I love the pickup right there, tight end at 223, and then Gabriel Murphy. So I think this is a solid B. I think it's a solid B. I do. I do. We had to pivot a little bit, but I think it's a solid B. My bad. No, nah, it's not just you. It's not just you, bro. I mean, like it, at the end of the day, what 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 would have changed if you would have took Fawaga? If Fawaga was available at thirteen, what would have changed? It'd been the same shit. Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know what I mean. But I just think that Fawaga is going to be the better player at that position. But you still took a position of need. I just still think that maybe he, maybe at thirteen, I think Fadu maybe moves the guard at the next level. Uh, we didn't get a defensive tackle. Uh, which we already brought back a shit ton of them in free agency, right? So it's really not really necessarily a need. Tyree Wilson is going to give you some reps from the interior also this year, and he'll bounce outside as an edge rusher. So at the end of that, I, you know, I think this is okay. I think we missed on linebacker, which sucks. And I think that we took a quarterback pretty late, but it's what it is. I'm mad about this. I think a, a solid B, solid B. Um, salute to everybody here in the building. Hammer, what you got going on, man? When you got another show coming up? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow night. Okay. Oh, wait. No. Shit. I got games. I got games the next three nights. Uh, right. Maybe over the weekend. All right. Well, if I'm not back tonight, you guys, I may try and do something. I try to get a hold of Stu, but he's probably hanging off of a building right now because Purdue got their ass whipped last night in the national championship. So I tried to call him. He's probably somewhere wasted on campus, laid down crying inside and outside so i don't know what the hell's going on with Stu, but um we'll definitely bounce back get some stuff going i'm gonna reach out to my boy east coast gridiron get him on to break down some potential mid to late round steals for us also um and other than that you guys as always man we love you we appreciate you guys little bro thank you for pulling up and and gracing the show man we appreciate it it's been uh, long overdue i know you've been doing your thing and got a lot going on in, in, in your real life which is a good thing you know what I'm saying? But um, once again, you guys, on the way out, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. I wanted to talk about WrestleMania, but to be real with you, that's not it's not the right platform right now because I'll go off on a tangent. We'll talk about that for the next hour and a half. I got so many thoughts when it comes to that. So, But yeah. Um, other than that, man, go over to Hammer's channel. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet, man. And um, OaklasVegas.com. Go get you some merch. Thank you to everyone that's been going over there and buying uh, buying a bunch of T-shirts and, and, and coffee mugs. I just want to say I appreciate you guys from the from the bottom of my heart. Salute to everybody that gifted all the new members in the chat. Salute to Top. Salute to uh, Spivey. Salute to um, Hug. Salute to everybody. Brandon, all my dogs, man. I appreciate you guys. Whether you're watching on Twitter or YouTube, just want to say I appreciate every single one of y'all, man. We will be back shortly. Um, oh, real quick. We'll have Sanjeet on at some point this week. Uh, we'll have East Coast Gridiron, and then um, I talk to. We're gonna do a coffee and Hondo. <laughs> Y'all ready for a coffee and Hondo? We're gonna do a coffee and Hondo. We, we we were talking the other day, and it's it's coming. Closer to the draft, it's coming. So stay tuned for that. But um, once again, y'all, love y'all, appreciate y'all. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. One.